see history in the making. Feel the rhythm. Feel the ride. Get on up. It's bobsled time. I'm going to steal the Declaration of Independence. Boom shakalaka turn up. Welcome back, you guys. Thank you very much for joining me. Look at this special situation in real life. Mo Burry, when was the last time we did a real life, in person, COVID touching, breaking rules podcast? Uh, was it uh, The Office that we didn't even post? No, no, no. I think it was Too Fast, Too Furious. <laughs> no, Too Fast, Too Furious was on Zoom with Mo Bunga. Anyways, you guys, we're live, we're here. This is a special day, okay? I am in Baltimore. Welcome to the Millennial Classics with yours truly, Swartik Mayanja and Mumbari Mikaya, in person, well, at least we are, and on this podcast, on this YouTube channel, we bring to you the, uh, the best and most memorable movies, music, and culture-changing events from our generation, Mumbari Mikaya. I drove all the way to Baltimore to watch this movie and do this podcast with you. Please tell me, what are we doing and why is it a Millennial Classic? So we're doing a great movie called Cool Runnings. Yes. Um, it, I mean, this movie, if if you didn't watch it in school at some point, then, uh, damn, your teachers were never sick. Yeah. Because <laughs> every substitute teacher had this, had this cool bag in the yes. back pocket. Um, it's just, I think, bobsledding. I don't think it was around before this movie. I, no. Like, I think it was invented after this movie. hundred percent. Because I don't know anyone who knew it before. The, the, this movie is like, it's like one of those movies where uh, it's just iconic. Everyone remembers it. I mean, Jamaica, I mean, still chilling off it. 2014, the Olympics, they were still rocking the Cool Runnings thing. A hundred percent. This movie is fantastic. Uh, I think it's... So I was talking to Mumbari before we started about how we need to start making rules as to, or like, you know, uh, I don't, I don't want to say rules, but guidelines as to what is considered a millennial classic, especially when movies are this old. Uh, it, this movie came out October 1st, 1993, but on the rewatch, yeah, it doesn't matter how old this movie is. It is amazing. There's no CGI. There's nothing that really dates it, right? Um, yeah. It, it's a Disney family movie. It's hilarious. The reason I say, just like you said, that Bob Sledding was invented after this, this is probably the first time I knew the, Olymp the Winter Olympics were a thing. I didn't even know when I first watched this that they had Olympics in the winter prior to this, right? I always thought it was just the sprinters where that's where the Jamaicans won took their money. But, obviously, there is a Winter Olympics. This privied me to that entire world, and this movie is actually 100% like, funny from the second you start to the second it ends. Yeah, I mean, you watch it as a kid. Um, it's, and it's one of those things where it's aged beautifully. Yes. Which you can't say a lot about it. a lot of things. Even but, movies we've done in the 2000s. I'm talking about, like, like, The Mummy. We had all these whole Me Too conversations about The Mummy and all of these movies that came our way after this. This movie is clean, cut, it's beautiful. It is a millennial classic, and we'll get into the details as to why it is but since we are talking about the past and the old good old days let me tell you jump in my time machine and let me tell you what was happening when this movie dropped october 1st 1993 and uh, i've got a few things here because i was born that year so i needed to remind myself as to what was happening those years and so because i know i am a millennial and i needed that reminder so do you yours truly was born uh december 26 1993 and then on that year, 1990, uh, 1993, October 6th, after nine seasons and three championships, Chicago Bulls' Michael Jordan decided to retire um, that first time when he quit. Um, uh, Re yeah. Retired. Yeah. Yeah. Quit, retired, took a break. Um, that happened in 1993. Nelson Mandela won the uh, Nobel Peace Prize. That's amazing. I'm from South Africa. No go uh, Mandela. Uh, the biggest musicians this year. This shocked me. This is when I said this is a dated movie. Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson was the number one artist that year. Janet Jackson, Snoop Doggy Dog. He went by Snoop Doggy Dog and Garth Brooks. 
Those are the three biggest artists. And then the movies of that year. The biggest, the five biggest movies of that year. Jurassic Park, Mrs. Doubtfire. The Fugitive. The what? The Fugitive? The Fugitive, no. Uh, yes, The Fugitive did come out. The Firm and Sleepless in Seattle. I thought you were going to quiz me for a second. Stop it. Now, it you, uh, my computer's right here. But uh, Sleepless in Sela uh, Se Seattle is the only movie I haven't seen. But those are some great movies. Yeah, 1993 was a good year. 1993 was indeed a good, good year. Including the fact that this movie, Cool Runnings, did come out that year. Mumbury, the plot, and how was this made? Uh, how was Cool Runnings made? So, um, this is one of those based in the true stories that really stretches the based in the true story. I mean, if they had done the exact opposite movie, I think it would have been closer to the truth. But what would wait, wait, what would be the exact opposite movie? What's your definition of the exact opposite? So. Almost all the scenes are like, they don't they don't have enough money, so they have to raise money. They got the money, of course. The Olympic booth, Jamaica board paid for them. One hundred percent. There was no kissing booth. No kissing. There was no kissing booth. <laughs> the whole we we're, we're not accepted by everyone. That never happened. Uh, the whole we like almost we're like on a world record run, and then the the sled broke. That never happened. Mm. They uh, were like they had like the three of like the worst six runs and then they crashed because they lost control the driver lost control so it, it's not but I, you know what I like this movie better this is why we have movies of course exactly this is why we have movies because no one wants to watch the story about uh, Jamaicans fucking up at the Winter Olympics the, fir the first time any team goes to the Olympics for any sport it's gonna be trash we yeah. don't want to see that movie <laughs> exactly. I mean they did lose at the end so you know spoiler alert but yeah they did lose at the end um, but, uh, yeah, this movie was filmed in Calgary and, um, Jamaica, Kingston, Calgary, um, over two months. They filmed in the winter first, so they filmed in Calgary first. It was pretty well received, 76% critics, 81%, um, on that's on Rotten Tomatoes and 81% from people rating. So it cost me 17 mil and it made 154 worldwide. So 154 million worldwide. It's a big hit. Um, it must have. It must have been huge. He, like this is a great. This is the biggest it, live action Disney movie at the time when it came out. That makes sense. That makes sense. But I, oh, I look, which I, is a pretty big deal because the, the cast is literally was John Candy, and then no one else was like huge. Huge. Yeah. Um, when we get to the cast, I have quite a, quite a bit about that. But um, I still feel, I know that you're saying if you haven't seen it, and like teachers used to play this a lot, because I do remember watching this multiple times in school. It was this in Sandlot. Yeah. It's like people, you just watch it over and over and over. But before I watched, before we did the rewatch, in my head, Cool Runnings was an underrated movie. Is Cool Runnings considered a black movie? Uh, that's tough because it takes place in the Winter Olympics. <laughs> ice? <laughs> you mean winter as in ice? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so... None of the people are like black icons. Malik Yoba. Okay. Name a movie. Um, yeah. It's not. Because yeah. I know he's in Copland. I have to see Copland because of you know, Stallone. But I know he's in Copland and I know he's done a ton of TV. Like, um, and good TV shows too. But, uh... He's the most famous person out of this. This is his first movie. Yes. So quite literally, it was the first movie for two of the main cast members. And it still was a huge hit. But it's not like... I wouldn't... I wouldn't call... You think it's a black movie? Actually, fuck it. It might be a black movie. It's I not think enough so, right? Anyway. Yeah, but it's I'll, not like a Spike Lee joint where you're like... You know, yeah. My first Blood Blood movie that came out. <laughs> the, the, five blood, the Five Bloods. The Five Bloods. Um, so let's get into this movie. I think it's more of a Disney movie than a black movie. Is yeah. Remember the Titans of Black movie? No, it's more. It is a lot more white. No, it's half and half. It's literally half and half. But and it's half. about the the struggle. Yeah. But this is also kind of a. They That's never really point. say. But I think it's more of a Disney movie than a black movie. I, I guess. I get. Anyways, anyways, it's a great Disney black movie. All right. Um, Mumbari handed me the reins. He allowed me to, to pick the options for the favorite scenes, and oh my, this is a tough one for me to choose because. There is, there are so many scenes in this movie. Literally, I had to, I, I had to merge many of them together. I had to cut some of my favorites. I have five, but 
understand every, nearly every scene in this movie. Near perfect. I love this movie. So, options for the best scene of this movie. Starting from the get. The intro, the push cart scene, all the way through um, when he crashes. And then yeah. they ask him, Sanka, are you dead? That's who won. Feel the rhythm. Feel the rhyme. Get on up. It's push cart time. And go. And then number two is when they're recruiting for the bobsled team. That's the second scene. You're on the air, sled guard. Gentlemen, a bobsled is a simple thing. Yeah, so the toilet. <laughs> Three, this is the one I kind of merged. Um, the first bobsled run through and then the reaction in, in the... Uh, uh, in the hotel room afterwards when they ended up talking about Buckingham Palace. So they do their first run through, they crash. Oh, they don't crash. They really suck. And then they go to the hotel room and they start talking trash to each other. Slow down! Slow, slow it down! Slow down! Slow it down! These bananas are stinking like a dead dog. Back up! Back up! The eight ball. This is my mama's secret recipe. Four is the bar scene. Now you listen to me, buddy. I will not be talked to that way, so you better come up with a damn good apology, or else. Or else, fucked. How? And then last but not least is that last run where they carry the sled through the finish line. Instead of pushing it like what Murray was talking about yesterday. Oh, we actually watched it together. But yeah, just like, it, they probably should have pushed it. It's ice. It's I literally so ice. Grease, you're dead? No, man. I'm not dead. I think you missed. I I think you missed. And I think we're about to figure out why I do these. <laughs> but um, this movie essentially is like, the reason it's so good and the reason it keeps on moving is because whenever there's no action, a montage just pops up to keep it moving. And then a good like Jamaican song pops up. So I have all the montages pretty much. So the first one when they're like... Um, they're learning to bobsled, and Wild yep. Wild Life plays. They're gonna practice right here, right here in the boat wagon. They're gonna practice. Go! Down here! Put the ball down! Come on, hustle! Catch up with them! There you go! Shoot! Oh. Oh. And then I have, uh, when they're raising money, that whole montage. Yeah. Pretty funny. Jamaica, we have a bobsled team. No people say you know they can't believe. Jamaica, we have a bobsled team. And then the Rise and Shine montage in Canada. When, when they, they decide to start practicing for real? Um, no, this is when they first get there and they're like, rise above it. No, no, yeah, when they, when they decide to start practicing. Practicing and they, for real. And they throw the water on the coach. Yeah. So those three montages, I just have, uh, I think they have to be in the scenes because music's great and... Uh, the, so the reason I haven't, I didn't put any of the montages in because yes, everyone loves a training montage, and if it, if you and specific for a sports movie, you're right. For me not to add any of the montage, that's on my, that's on me. But there's no there's no there's no what's it called conversation. There's no speaking. There's nothing going on but just the good music. I think that, I, think, I think that's good. I think those are the. I disagree. I think this movie has bars from beginning to end. So let's. Uh, but what you if, wouldn't say this is like an acting movie. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, 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 I. Yeah, no, it's not an acting movie. No one made it after this movie. <laughs> John Candy died after this movie, right? <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro. <laughs> um, but. So, Mumbari, your uh, favorite scene. Is it one of the montages? Uh, damn. You know, I also put down the Tallulah to uh, yes. the Cool Runnings. When they say Cool Runnings in the movie. Oh, I have and, that written down. Literally. Peace Be the Journey. Peace uh, Be the Journey. Wait, let, so wait. You, you had that? But as my favorite is the, the ending. I mean, that's the iconic shot. Uh, you see all the first responders run down the ice 
And then this is actually probably the best shot of the whole movie. You don't know what's going on. Everyone's quiet. And then the first responders start parting. And then the guys are like lifting the bumps. They're walking down the ice. Yes. Um, Fantastic scene. Listen. Everyone starts clapping. I love a good slow clap in the right. movie. I think you add a slow clap. Um, the dads that everyone that needs to be there for approval, even the East Germans, even the East Germans, the uh-huh. Swedes, I'm guy right, whatever they say. You literally just did three different countries. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so that's my favorite team. So uh, yeah, um, the final run, starting in the beginning of that scene, I put down that sports commentators are the original grifters. These, mo- yo, the entire movie, these sports commentators are savagery to the Jamaican team. The entire movie, right? From from the get, they don't know what they're doing. They literally print out a huge, this is the front page of the Olympics, Winter Olympics. They have the uh, the Jamaican bobsled team chasing the sled, right? They, they joke them, they make fun of them the entire movie. And at the beginning of the race, because they've been doing a couple of good times, the commentator comes out and you're like, you know what? Go Jams! I'm like, Negro, this is the same dude, the same dude, the same commentator, the same prior. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't like the whole Jams thing. I've I never heard, I've never, have you ever heard someone calling Jamaican Jams? Of course not, because it, look, the commentator is the only one in the movie that said, Go Jams. <laughs> Did you hear any yeah. of the Jamaicans say, Go Jams? <laughs> yeah, I've never heard that. Of course not. But um, my point is, the scene prior, the, the, that same commentator was like, you know what, if I was the Jamaican team, I would just quit. And then the next scene, the next scene, he's saying, go Jams. The Grifters is on a whole different level, right? <clears throat> Look at this. They've got to get into that sled. Now, I've never seen anything like this. I know it's not funny, but how embarrassing. Now, thank goodness, for a minute, I didn't think they'd ever get all four of them in, and that could have been a disaster. You know, the driver here, Dries Panic, looks like the sled's really driving him. Who better watch his mouth? He better watch more than that. This is the time when this team may be thinking this may not have been such a great idea. I think the fans here have an extreme case of Jamaican fever. Oh, so do I. No, 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 no. So do we. And yes, it's obviously cheesy, it's corny, but you need this at the end of the movie. You heard Burry say said that the first time they went to the Olympics, they crashed just because of the turn and it wasn't like a like like a technical issue. The actual whatever. ending. That's how it actually ended. That's how it actually ended. Um, but this is a movie ending. And like what Burry said, this is the reason you have a movie and it's goddamn fantastic. And then lastly, the dad, when the dad comes there and he opens up his shirt and he has the Jamaican flag and Junior is smiling, I can't tell you. Yes, you cheer up. You get the feels. This is a fantastic scene. I agree 1000%. I can't blame anyone for having this final scene um, um, as their favorite. But before we continue, because this just did blow up, we can't get over the we can't skip over the fact that when they were carrying that bob sled the only thing that was happening in my head was that african dance The entire time I was thinking, uh, yes, I was thinking about that African beam. It's fantastic. It it looks very similar. I was all about it. Um, Would you get that for your funeral? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. No, you know what you would do? You would be like, in your will, you'd be like, I want to get those guys. But get the knockoff guy. <laughs> yeah. I want to pay full price, and then they would drop your ass. In the of the- if I'm dead, drop whatever you need, baby. Get whatever you need. Listen, as long as I'm not getting any of the fields. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you. Um, I disagree about the, my favorite scene. My favorite scene is um, that first Bob sled run all the way through the Buckingham Palace. And I don't. I I say the first Bob. Like, but that, is that real? That your that's your favorite team? That's is like when they mess up. Yeah. Look. The reason I like when I when they mess up is because the entire movie up in the, up until that point is unbelievable, right? It's unbelievable that someone who says you understand the premise of this movie. The dude is a professional sprint, like he's trying to get to the Olympics as a professional sprinter. He loses the race. Right, he goes to the office of the Olympic head guy, and by the way, he has the cleanest white afro I've ever seen. 
Mr. Coolidge, who could, you know, that dude? Yeah. Cleanest white afro I've ever Mandela. seen. Mandela. Close. He's it's clean. It's white from top to bottom. There's no black spots, nothing. But um, he goes there and he says, I'm, I'm a sprinter. I'm not a boxer. Yeah, why didn't he do any other sprinting events? That's I was like, I'm yo, like, can you do the 200? It's, the, it's track and field. Do something else in track and field. You can still make it to the Olympics. Yeah. And what's harder? A jump from being a professional sprinter to being a bobsledder or going from sprinting to boxing? Yeah. Well, in real life, no professional Me? sprinters did it because it makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. So to believe that first premise is huge. And then on top of the fact that you did that first premise, they could have easily just made it at the timeline. Oh, you guys have a year to train. They said three months. Yeah. Understand three months. They've never seen snow. They don't know what ice is. And they're supposed to learn, get good, and be good enough to qualify for a the Olympics? A good movie would have been the East Germans being like, yo, fuck these guys. Who, <laughs> who do these guys think that they can just show, show up, up. On, in, into the Olympics, which is the best in the world, and with three months of training, and just waltz in there and yes. get a medal? Um, when Mr. Coolidge told uh, John Candy, uh, Irv, the coach, in the movie, I don't want you to parade us around, I thought that was like legit that's such a legit concern because it is a white coach taking the first Jamaican um, bobsled team to the Olympics so it, it does kind of seem like is this legit or are you guys just joking around so I find no but if the guys qualify then what does it matter that's that that's my whole thing like they it's not embarrassing if they qualify so if you go up there and they're good enough to qualify then what are you, what's embarrassing about that even if you come in last in the Olympics that's still better than everyone else in the world Understood, understood, um, but that's why in my notes I legitimately said, are the Swedes, are they just Swiss, bull? bro. There are no Swedes in this movie. The Swiss? It's Swiss. What are you, the Swiss? Are, are German Swiss? No. The red guys? Are the, from Sweden. Switzerland. Oh my Swiss. god, I thought the Swiss was from Switzerland the entire time. <laughs> Listen, while we were watching the movie, I was watching it with uh, Burry's brother, the bugger. And then... <laughs> um, he asked... Wait, is it clergy? Clary? Where is it? Clary? Calgary. Calgary. He asked, where are they recording it? And he's, are they recording it in Calgary? I said, Filming. no. Filming? Filming it in Calgary. I said, it's, it, it's not in Calgary. It's in Canada. I'm not good with geography, okay? Don't blame me if I don't know if the Swiss are from Germany or from Sweden or from Switzerland. It doesn't matter. The Swiss, okay? We'll call them the Swiss. In my notes, I legit had, are the Swiss just bullies and mad that a random team can come in? Or the Swiss never talked to them. Are they being racist? The Swiss never talked to them. What do you mean? The guys who were bullies were the East Germans. Oh I my can't stress this God. enough. He just looked up to the Swiss. But the Swiss, oh. him and the Swiss, and he watched the Swiss, but he never... That's a bad look for the Germans, right? The Germans? Okay. It's a bad look for you, the guy. <sighs> it's all right. It's a kid's movie. I feel like the kids might have been confused, too. Okay, because they were talking about them Ein Hein Swisses all the time, right? So I thought it was a Swiss. Anyways, um, so, yeah, that's my favorite team. But, like, it's not the crashing. It's not the beginning part of the, that failed first run. It's mainly that hotel scene when they're reacting to it. Because everyone's mad, everyone's tense, right? It, that scene is Asanka shining at his highest level, okay? Let me describe the situation here, okay? They're all in there, they're all mad. Um, Mr. Baldi is getting mad at Sanka because he just is mad at the world all the time for reading a children's book. And he starts making fun of Asanka about the fact that he can't, he, that he, he's reading a children's book and Sanka comes with comes at him with bars. So they're making fun of each other the entire time. And um, Sanka tells uh, Mr. Baldi, what's his name? Yul Brenner. Yul Brenner about the fact that his picture that he's holding up is a Buckingham Palace and how silly he thinks Yul is for thinking that he's one day going to live there. And he makes fun of the fact that he's going to be, uh, that he needs to marry the queen to actually live there. And then on top of that is the greatest insult I've ever heard from anyone ever. He says, when they were talking about who can't read and who can't read when they were doing the, 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 the Hulk. He said, what I am saying to you is that you are the kind of club-toting, raw meat-eating, meat-tarzan, you jading, big bald-headed that can only count to ten if he's barefoot or wearing sandals. Well, that's a children's book that means it's too advanced for the likes of you. What are you trying to say?
that I am not smarter than a little child? No. What I am saying to you is that you are the kind of club-toting, raw meat-eating, me Tarzan, you jane and big ball bubblehead that can only count to ten if he's barefoot or wearing sandals. Tell me that isn't just amazing. And by the way, Sanka, everything he says in this movie is gold. It's perfect. He is the comedic relief. He Even at the end, when Delis is telling Sanka about, no, we need to be more like the Swiss, and Sanka is like, look, yeah, I know I'm always kidding around. I know I'm kissing my egg. I know I do all these funky stuff, but I'm Jamaican. I can't be I'm grinding, zining down the, down the hill, right? That's not me. So yes, he's funny. He's got the comedic relief, but on top of all of that, He's like, a, he, he's, he's just, he's so Jamaican, he's so real, he's so funny. Fantastic, fantastic. That is indeed my favorite scene. Um, but before we move on to worst scene, I didn't want to talk about another one I had uh, listed here. Which one was it? Which one was it? My uh, very close second was the um, the bar fight. Can we, we got to talk about Isn't this. Isn't right after that? Um, is it? No, I thought that, like, they have... Yeah, maybe. It doesn't matter. The point is, the bar fight, I love that scene. That's my close second. I really wanted to pick that because that Yule, Brenna, and Junior relationship, hatred, friendship at the end is really good. There are some movies that earn that friendship, right? And there's some movies that force that friendship. And I know they start at really, like, butt-heady... It's li like... Junior is the reason that Yul doesn't make it to the Olympics, right? So, of course, they hate each other in the beginning. And you, I thought, in the beginning of the movie, I was like, this dude is too much. If you watch it, the intro at that first race when he's slapping his head, it's like, it's too much, okay? It's a little too much. It's too, too much. Just a little concerned about that big baldy. <laughs> they hate each other from the get. But then they start to like each other. Um, uh, uh, Junior brings the money to get them to the Olympics. And then by the time the bar fight scene happens, you believe that they are becoming friends, right? You see Junior frail in front of the Germans, right? Not the Swiss, frail in front of the Germans. They go to the uh, bathroom together. And that speech that Yule tells uh, uh, Junior to say, yeah. what does he say? I am powerful. What is it? I see pride, I see power. Yes, I see pride, I see power, I see a bad mother who don't takes no sh from anybody. I love that. Tell me you weren't hyped when you heard that. Tell me you didn't want to stand up and scream into the top of your lungs, right? It was so hype, it was so exciting. And the best part is, right? The best part is, yeah, and it's just like all of us. You get motivated for five seconds, you get out, you think you can take on the world, and 10 seconds later you find out, oh, you're probably not that guy, right? He goes out there, he looks at the Germans, the German pokes him in the chest, and you see him literally shrivel back up into the person he used to be, right? He doesn't get his growth until he um, talks to his father. He shrivels back up, and then uh, Yu has to come in, throw the punch, and then my favorite character in the movie, Santa, does what a real brother would do. Jumps from the top balcony, top balcony, head first for his boy. Um, it, it's 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 such a perfect scene, but um, I do like uh, I do like the scene prior to that a little bit better. I think it's wild that in a bobsledding sports movie, your two favorite scenes take place in a hotel room and a bar. Yeah, because I'm I'm in the movies for the people, right? For bobsledding, remember the football movies. It's not gonna always be the sports scenes that get me excited. You like your montages, okay? I like my comedic relief. Let me live. We're seeing. I don't have options for this. Okay. I don't either. I, I don't think. I think this movie is like. A, it's just like a decent meal. Nothing. Oh, nothing. It's. It's. It, it, nothing. You're not gonna tell people about it, right? Afterwards, not gonna be like, yeah, 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 yeah I had this insane food. But you're not gonna be like anything was bad. Oh, oh, we, we, why would you do a podcast on the movie, right? Why would you not tell people about him? Don't worry, this movie, don't listen to him, okay? Listen to me. This movie is perfect. A decent movie? It's better than a Cheesecake. Stop, but it, it's, don't worry. It's, no, it's not cap. The disrespect right now. The disrespect. It's, this, I'm not disrespecting. There's no bad scene. It, all right. This movie, this movie is not a masterpiece. We can say that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay? Okay. So it's below the <laughs> scene. Yeah, it's below masterpiece. I'm good with that. This all is right. not Picasso, sure. Okay. Yes. So, 
I can be a good movie. A great movie? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, look, it doesn't matter what this movie is, okay? It's a millennial classic and that's what matters most. I know you said you have no worst scenes, but I have, this is, if I was forced, if I was forced to choose a worst scene, it would be when they tried to be, get real sentimental and they tried to have that conversation with Irv about why he cheated. I thought I thought that was the most forced out of this the movie. It was necessary to get to the point, but I thought they fleshed that out pretty well when he went barging into the room to talk no, about his storyline. Is probably the better the better storyline out of all of them. It's the one that's least forced. And you, uh, you don't so you don't think that that sentimental scene you know, that why you cheated scene was forced. You didn't feel no. like it was a little off. If anything, the thing that's over the top is I see pride, I see power in the bathroom. So, what do you Has mean? Has that ever happened to anyone ever, bro? I, oh, that's, no! Bro, that, that's, that's the story! If you're talking about being forced, that's... Yul Brenner's relationship with the other dude is so over-the-top. Yes. Hammy. And so, like... This is, like... I mean, that dude is, like, grade A... He, he literally goes to therapy in, in, the, in the hour that, that we see. So, like... If anything is forced, it's that relationship. It, it, I think John Candy actually seems like a more realistic character about a disgraced guy that's still dealing with it. And you can see how it changed his entire life. Yes. So, um, I, and I agree, and I agree that it, it, it's not... It, it's not... Look, I'm saying it doesn't fit well with the rest of the movie. That scene, right? And so, when I say forced, I don't mean forced as in that wouldn't have happened. I feel like it just doesn't fit well with the rest of the movie. They try to be sentimental when the rest of the movie has all been giggles, laugh, and some action, right? And there was some seriousness, but it was never that serious. That's why I feel like it's out of place, and that's what I mean by it was forced. It's okay. If from the get, I'm saying there is no worse scene, but if I were forced to choose one, that's the one I would choose. Um, I already told you about a couple of quotes that I like. I literally believe you can just take out the transcript, the script, right, of everything Sanka says, and that could be the list of quotes, of the quotables. Do you have any, like, things that really popped out to you that you just loved? Um, can lightning run or nice? I like that. And then, like, I love Jamaican, Jamaica loves me. I yes, I love Jamaica. Don't 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 don't, don't disrespect. <clears throat> um, when they come out after they decide that they're not going to try to pretend to be the Swiss, you feel so good, especially after Song has that conversation. He's like, "Look, I want to be the." He says, uh, "Darius is like it's a classic sports moment." Exactly. Darius is like, "I'm trying to be the best, so we're going to do what the best do." Uh, uh, do. And Song is like, "The best I can be is Jamaican." And then they go out the next scene, and they say, feel the rhythm, feel the rhyme, get on up, it's bobsledding time. You can't. And then on top of that, if you say the name of the movie in the movie, you win. You just win. I feel like if you say the name of the movie in the movie, and, and on t uh, not only did they say the name of the movie, they put it in their rhythm running before they go bobsledding. Amazing, amazing quote, amazing rhyme, and this entire movie, even from the get, when he's on the push cart from the beginning of the movie and he starts rhyming, who's the best Sanka, who's the best Sanka, go, 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 like he's always rhyming, he's always making fun, everything Sanka says in this movie um, is fantastic, and those little jokes that Doris and Sanka have, are you dead, I, it gets me every time, you know how these jokes get old in these com comedies, it's giggling, I'm giggling the entire time, the entire time, okay, <clears throat> The cast. Mumbury. MVP? John Candy. After I just went on my full on Sanka drop, you really think it's John Candy? Yeah. Do you actually believe that? Yeah, I think he has the best scenes. Of <sighs> act, actual acting. Wow. Legitimately. Yeah. When he's talking, he, he's the only, he's the one that does the, you know, all these sports movies is one speech that like the main character has to do either like in the, if it's a coach or it's like the um whoever is in charge yeah. John Candy has to do that he does it he has to, he pretty much got has to keep the movie going and uh it it's weird to say cuz it's like it's about Jamaicans but he's clearly the main character of the movie 
I don't think he would be now. I think if they redid the movie, he would. The, the white coach wouldn't be the main character, but he's clearly the. I disagree with you wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly, because the reason seems you, like he's the main character. He's not. But then you realize he doesn't. There's no development. Move, there's no development. He doesn't move anything forward. Once he gets the team started, he's kind of off to the side. I mean, they. Um, it literally once he gets to Canada, it becomes about John Candy and what he did before and and how how he's going to get this like the sled and he has to meet up with people and they got disqualified and he has to make the appeal and all this stuff i, I guess i guess I, sure sure but for him maybe you can you can argue the fact that he's the main character sure but you can't argue the fact that he's the mvp of the movie there's no way that earth John Candy, the coach, is the MVP of the movie. I can't, I can't agree with that. I would have Sanka as number one. That, I don't even have to explain. I've been raving his, he, he, thinking he's the greatest thing ever. It, All right, I'm going to move them both co-MVP. Co I'm down with that. I can, nah, you can have him as co I don't even, I think John, I literally have as the LVP, if I had to choose, it would be Earth. I would have Je John Candy. I can't agree with. I don't feel what the whole Irv situation is. I don't. I don't connect with him. I don't feel him. That one speech he had at the when he breaks in and he says, "Look, if you want to give it, take it out of me. Kick me out, but don't take it out on the boys." I love that scene. I love that scene. But that's the only scene. I think he has the worst jokes. That a dire bobsledding recruiting scene where he's. Like, he's talking about, oh, this is, you know, your bones won't break. They'll get crushed. It it doesn't, it's just, it's not, I'm not feeling John Candy, okay? I think Sanka. He's not, he doesn't want to be there. That's why he's saying it that bad. Yeah, understood, but he agreed to be the coach. So at no, least he didn't. still some effort. Oh, he's, yes, he he's still did. He's still not into it. He's using every single thing to not be into it. He coaches them. They make it there. Maybe after the speech, when he uh, he says that they need a chance, he gets into it. But um, but yeah, that's who my MVP is and my LVP. Do you have an LVP? East Germany. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they break up. Or, I mean, they East Germany and West Germany unify a couple years later. This seems like the start of the end. Um, in, in uh, Cool Runnings, when they're the bullies, um, even though it's kind of played out, evil Germans. But, uh, Evil Germans, yeah. yeah. That is definitely played out. It, it, but it's 1992, so you gotta give them a pass. I kinda like them. I like them as bad guys because they were so silly. And this is a family movie. It's weird because you also a... don't see him sled. You, uh, they're literally those guys that are just like on the bleachers talking shit. Exactly. Um, it's almost like high school, um, is what I connected to. But, uh, yeah, those are the only LVPs. Like I said, this movie, it's not like. Not a lot of lows in this movie. Zero lows. Zero lows, ladies and gentlemen. Zero lows. Um, I wanted to talk about this. Who peaked? I have everyone in this movie peaked outside of Malik Yoba. And maybe Malik Yoba. John Candy, bro. What the hell? You think this is John Candy's peak? What are you talking about? He was the most famous person in this movie before the movie even started. He was in planes, trains, and automobiles. He was in Spaceballs. I haven't seen any John Candy movie. As a, as a millennial, John Ke I, J J this is John Candy speak. Let me see. Okay, there's definitely no. No, you're right. You're right. Um, so this is not John Candy's peak, but everybody it's else. It's not the director's peak. Um, Malik Yoba, I'd say he's most recognized from this. Yes. Um, one of them, I think... I think the Reese, he was in Oz for a couple years. So maybe, because I haven't seen Oz. But as far as everyone speak, I think I think everyone in this movie, besides John Candy, gets mostly recognized from this. Because it, it was a huge movie. Yeah. No, this... Uh, I, and that's why I have everyone. Uh, so, because I didn't see I mean, most of other John Candy's other movies. Malik Yoba becomes Malik Yoba, but I don't think... I don't think... Would you consider this a is big movie... So you're saying this is the biggest thing he's done? I think so. Maybe. You you, you, you said Copland? There's, a, there's another show that he's doing right Copland now. Copland the movie, but 
No, I, no I'm saying the TV show. He's doing a current TV yeah, show. Yeah, I mean, he was in, he's so, in, he's in uh, what's the Lucius Lion? He was in Empire. He's in Designated Survivor. Like, he's he played main characters in big shows. It's just, so I the, don't know how many people recognize him as those characters or as Yul Brenner from Cool Ranks. And I would guess a lot of people are like, oh, that's Yul Brenner from Cool Runnings. From Ranks. Cool Runnings. I hear you. I, could, I, I, I hear you. Um, uh, so, the remake. Are we ready? Yeah. Um, again, uh, uh, Mumbori allowed me to take the reins on this. And you know how Mumbori goes wild and crazy with the remake? He's always trying to make something special. He never just wants to recast it. He called it a remake because he wants a different movie. So I tried to do the same thing, ladies and gentlemen. I'm on the bandwagon. Right? I'm with you and let's go get it. Okay? So... Let me paint you a picture of this remake, this 2020 version. And I think a lot of how Cool Runnings worked well is because no one knew anything about bobsledding. So when the idea of training three months to become an Olympic bobsledding team is put on the table, you're not shocked. If someone told you you have three months to join the NBA, you'd be like... Also slay. Of course, but... Everyone's like, you just get on a... You get on a bomb with a trash can, you get on the top of a hill... You sit on it and you sled down. People get the basic premise. Yes. And then if you put a tube around it and then you're allowed to slide down that tube, it doesn't seem that bad. I know it's way harder than that, but I'm just saying off the top of the dome, in what events would you have to like, would you think an ordinary person could could finish? But he's not an ordinary person. He's an Olympic track runner. Well, That's Sanka is an ordinary person. Yes. And Around three and other Olympic track for runners. For some reason, Sanka is able to just keep up with the sprints with everyone else. Because he's the best push car driver in all of Jamaica. Don't disrespect the okay, MVP these guys, movie. These guys were going to be peak Olympic sprinters. These yes. These guys were going to run nine nines. On ice, when they all sprint, Sokka's sprinting right next to them. Yeah. Which makes no sense. It's okay. That's actually impossible. It's ice. He can slide along if he can't keep up. Ladies and gentlemen, don't worry. That's not the point. The remake. The whole point of this remake is you, you know the basics of a sport, but you don't know the details of the sport. And it's not big enough so you care about what happens after, right? So that's the premise that we're going off of. So my remake of 2020 is going to be a Winter Olympic sport. Nobody knows the rules about, and that is curling. So it's going to be the first Ethiopian curling team, okay? And yes, everything is basically the same. The premise, how the movie moves forward. Our cast, okay? And I say the Ethiopian, so I need my dark-skinned friends to join me for this movie, ladies and gentlemen. John David Washington from Black Klansman. He's going to be the serious team leader. We have Wesley Snipes. If you have not watched um, Dolomite, you need to watch it if you don't think Wesley Snipes can be funny. He is hilarious. Hilarious in that movie. And white, man's can't, white man can't jump too, right? Um, comedic relief. I can't say this. Wesley Snipes is a competing in it? What do you mean? He's competing in the Olympic sport? He's going to be... This is the team I'm creating. Okay, okay. Um, um, David Washington is a serious team leader. Darius's part. Wesley Snipes is going to be um, Sanka's part. Um, the dude from, um, um, not Departed, the, well, how do you say his name? Jamal Hansu. Hansu, yeah. Um, from the South African Leo movie, Blood The Blood Diamond. Diamond. He's going to be the uh, bald guy, a new Brenner part, the serious dude. Donald Glover's going to be Julian with the daddy issues. And the coach. I, you guys need to watch billboards, right? For Francis McDormand, uh, where she's cussing and she's like living her best life being this old grizzly grumpy lady and that would be such she would be the curling god coach how they call uh what's his name uh Irv the sledding god coach she would be the curling god coach who cheated in her past life that is um, teaching this first Ethiopian ice curling team I think this movie would be magical and because because uh, the rewatch of this movie translated so well to 2020. There was no issues. I want to keep the premise exactly the same, the process exactly the same. We don't need to get to the details of the nitty gritty. That scene where they finish painting the Jamaican bobsled team. Like, get out of here. These de- so they're sprinters and now they're professional painters. Did you see how clean that bobsled looked? Yeah. Clean, good. clean. But that's, that's my definition. That's my remake, my 2020 remake. Um, 
I don't know if you had any recasting decisions or if you have any disagreements, but I think that's a nearly perfect lineup of a movie that would do fantastic in a 2020. I think it would have done well in uh, 99 with Wesley Snipes. <laughs> uh, I, did a, I did recasting too. Okay. Um, what you got to realize is it's 2020. There's certain trends going on in the world, right? Um, and one of the big trends is no one gives a shit about Winter Olympics anymore. <laughs> Did anyone ever, though? Is so, that's the question. Um, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and moved it to the Summer Olympics. All right? Because I think if there's way more interest, people actually tune in, more countries are involved, right? So, But we have to stay in the same lane, so we have to pick a white sport okay. that a predominantly black team is trying for the first time. I want to keep it a period piece because I think that has something to do with the based on a true story vibe. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had to find a sport where this was kind of tough with an African or Caribbean team that did okay in it. So I found four man kayaking canoeing. Okay. Oh you need an athlete, right? Can so I just time out right here? I, this is inside baseball, ladies and gentlemen. But Burry here is an old professional sailor. Are you casting has, yourself in this movie? To do with Are you going to cast yourself? Thing. Oh, <laughs> close though. <No. laughs> um, so I also had John David Washington. There you go. Good choice. I had John Boyega. I kept them all the same age. I don't know. I don't know what you would do with Leslie Stein. The black don't cry. Maybe they won't know. They yeah. won't know. They'll know. Uh, John Boyega, I had Jonathan Majors from the Five Bloods and uh, um, Wait, who? in San Francisco, Jonathan Majors. Okay. Wait, he's old as hell. What do you mean no, same he's age? Not. He's what, 30s? Jonathan Majors. Oh no, I'm thinking of the who's who played the Trump guy in um the other one at Linda. Okay, go ahead, keep keep going. And then Michael B. Jordan. So I have those four. Ooh. So so I have those four, and they're representing the first canoeing team from either Togo or South Africa because both those teams got a bronze in one at one point in form in canoeing. Oh so wow. it can be based in a true story, right? Um the coach, I have to get some old guy who doesn't want to do it anymore. I'm not gonna do the whole cheating scandal thing, but I would do like a I'm too old for this shit type deal. And uh so I got Tommy Lee Jones. That's a great pick. Um, Tommy Lee Jones is a great pick. That's a great pick. That's a great coach. I, I, Tommy Lee Jones did play a coach before, right? Um, I think he did. He, he gives me coach vibes. He definitely did. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> before I... Um, the only thing I would switch up about your, your, your recasting is the... Um, is, is the... Not the premise. The South Africa. South Africa's too... Like... South Africa? It's Togo or South Africa. Let's do Togo. Let's keep it with Togo. Togo is the way to go. Togo is the way to go. I feel like South Africa has enough shine. It has way too much shine. And they're not... All of your characters are different skin tones, right? So you, you keep... I mean, maybe they might be able to be from the same country, but I feel like they're... Yeah, Michael B. Jordan, jo uh, uh, John you David Washington. It's not kind of monolith, right? It's not a monolith, but you want to There'll believe. Be different tribes and shit. You can do whatever, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you can. Um, uh, I got some casting... Casting, uh, casting questions from the original Talk to me. movie. So originally, this was supposed to be a serious sports drama. It was called Blue M Maga. What is that? Right? Blue Maga? Did you just make that up? No, I thought I wrote that. Blue Maga. Okay, I'm sure you wrote it down. I know, I no doubt you wrote it down. I'm asking if it's real. <laughs> Oh, I wrote it down. Thank you for letting me know. Um, they, Disney wanted like a serious... Like a Remember the Titan series? Type deal, right? And then they ended up making it funny. But uh, they yeah. literally asked every single black actor before they ended up with these guys, which makes sense. Who were the big black actors? They asked, did they, they ask Will Smith? Cuba Gooden Jr. That makes sense. Jeffrey Wright. Don't know who he is. Um... He's in James Bond. He's Watchmen. He's oh, okay. In, uh, okay. Denzel for Darius. Eddie Murphy for Sanka. Denzel for Darius? Yeah. 
Eddie Murphy at this point, by the way, was the biggest movie star in the world, and they apparently wanted to pay him peanuts to play a Jamaican bobsledder, which makes no sense. Was, was Eddie Murphy? Gonna, oh yeah, because if it was if it was going to be, but you, they didn't want Eddie Murphy. But he was probably going to be Sanka as well. He was going to be the He's comedic gonna be relief yeah. in the serious movie. Okay, with Denzel as the head driver, I believe in the movie already. If yeah. all of those actors said yes. Yeah. I don't care who else is in the movie. Yeah. I'm down. I actually wouldn't care if they didn't have Jamaican accents. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, would be, it would be such a better acted movie. No offense to these guys. But, I mean, it's not offense to be a worse actor than Denzel. But, uh... Everyone's a worse actor than Denzel. <laughs> I mean, everybody. And then the, the other... So those... those the what first two, Denzel and Eddie, were can, like... I think they were actually offered. But, uh... It's funny you added Wesley Snipes because the dream casting was Wesley Snipes' as Yule, Yule Brenner, and then Marlon Wayans as Junior. Marlon Wayans. That was their dream junior. casting for this role. Oh, wow. And then uh, all, Tupac auditioned for it. That's and dope. dope. And then, they didn't let Tupac in the movie? No. Not even in the background character? And then, um, yeah. John Candy died five months after. So when you saw Swartik laughing at it earlier, you know well, he's a heartless person. Okay, it's not that I'm a heartless person. I'm saying he literally died after this movie. So that's why I was like, this is... Smile a bit more, Swartik. <laughs> um, he just... This is the last fact. movie it's that was released while he was alive. Yep. Um, and he was a... You think that egg is boiled? That Sanka cares It has to be. It has to be. It has, I, was thinking, I was thinking the same thing because there's no way. I mean, they literally crash multiple times in this movie and he's pulling out his same lucky egg. Yeah. Unless it's cracking every time and he's just using a new egg because yeah. then that loses the point of a lucky egg. But, you know. This movie um, revolves around the premise that there's a lot of haters out there. Every time there's... Every time something good happens, there's another hater. <laughs> well, I mean, this movie. I mean, there's a lot of sports movies work like this, and it's never, and it's never happened in real life. Has what it ever mean? happened to you where it's like something good happens, and then right, right after, after something bad happens, and then you get around that, and then right, right. after, yeah. and it's a different person. It's always another dude around the corner who hates on you for some weird reason. Listen, okay, look. So, number one... I know it's to push the movie forward, but... Uh, but it, it, is, it does get a little silly. And I do want to say, while we're on that point, you can understand that the dad being upset. Okay, you failed out of trying to be a professional sprinter, now you want a goddamn bobsled. I understand the frustration. But he tries to take him out of the bobsledding team after they make the Olympics? No. Like, no. I, it doesn't make sense. At that point, it makes no sense it because doesn't. you're flying to visit your son in the Olympics. Exactly. What's, what's, it's, not like he, it's not like he's at the Boys and Girls Club in the backyard sledding. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> he's at the Olympics. If his dad pulled that card, like, you need to come back with me right now while they were training with those wheels in Jamaica, it makes sense. Yeah. If you fly to Canada knowing that the entire country of Jamaica is on their feet watching these four dudes bobsled for the first time in representation for the country and you're going to say you're going to go work for Webster Webster and what's his name? Cohen. And Co it's really prestigious yes, firm by the yes. way. Yes. So they did definitely force a bunch of those um, you know hiccups or issues or problems. Um, but a lot of haters out there. A lot of haters. A lot of haters. But those East Germans they were consistent haters right? <laughs> consistent consistent haters. Uh but that's anything else, Will Burry? Um, the final scene uh -huh. when they your head scrapes the ice for about a minute straight. Uh, you would have Helmets. concussion. You would have oh. something. You're oh. going 80 miles an hour, and then your head's bouncing on the ice for 15 seconds. Um, you would have that's something. Not you wouldn't just pop back up and start carrying carrying a 600 pound bobsled. Uh, Something I, I get So in a lot of movies prior right? I get mad when the silliness is, Becomes too silly And this is one of the Like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean You know when I say People hit in the head And people get knocked out That kind of silliness Takes it's me out It's the same Disney fight Type thing But But My point was I didn't find this movie To be too silly Up until after They painted the bobsled And this is Five grown men celebrating the biggest achievement of all of their lives, and no, 
no alcohol, no drinks, no nothing. They have Coca Cola in their head, and I'm like, none. This is pre we found, we realized Coca Cola was bad, bro. Oh well, no. It, that, my point is not that it was bad. My point is, where's the beer? Where's the, it, it's just, the Olympics, bro? And you drinking Coke? They're peak athletes. Yeah, and they're drinking Coca Cola. They th- didn't know Coca Cola was bad. Bad lot of you. If you're a peak athlete, you know Coca Cola is bad. Okay, Michael Jordan just retired that same year, and he was smoking six cigars before each finals. Okay, so don't tell me not ten, not ten. Uh, I- I'm all set. You done? Yeah. yeah, I mean, we talked about how this movie is the greatest thing ever, and you need you, to watch it. If you drop out of the 100, you would just do the relay or the 200. Yeah, I mean that the, 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 that premise, right? The, it's a, it's a huge leap of faith, but if you're okay with it from the get, the rest of the movie is a the cakewalk. Uh, and the rest of the movie, yeah. Is and then uh, obviously the Winter Olympic qualifiers would take place after the Summer Olympics, so they'd have like a year and three months of training. Yeah. But it's also Jamaica, so you don't know really what time of year it is because it's always summer in Jamaica, right? Right. So what? I mean, my point is they don't. You don't really. They tell them how much time they have before the Winter Olympics. The tr- aren't the trials literally like a month or two before the, the winter, winter Olympic, Olympic trials are always after the summer Olympics. So if the summer Olympics are coming up, the winter Olympic trials wouldn't be. Oh no, I see what you're saying. I see what you said. Yes, I see what you said. Maybe the recruiting took a little longer than the movie made it out to see. No, no they had three months. The movie takes place in three months. That's insane. It's insane. It's insane. Even though it's insane, ladies and gentlemen, this movie is a millennial classic, if there ever were a millennial classic, okay? I was born this year. It's a big deal, all right? Go home, watch this movie, put it in. If you're a teacher and you have to tell these students to study, if you're a substitute, pop this movie in. This movie needs to be shared with the world, okay? Needs to be shared with the world. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And if you are listening to this on a podcast, definitely rate it. Give us those five stars, because goddammit, you know we need it. Um... Ladies and gentlemen, we'll catch you on the flip. Deuces.